Okay, so we're starting the B kit, Bella. Um, before we get started with this, I just want to say um, I heard a story about a man who works on a church security team who was killed recently while providing security for a church service. Um, I'll be keeping his church and family in my prayers, uh, and if anyone else wants to do that as well, uh, I think that would be good. So, this is the bee kit. Um, this is not a lot of yellow, so I, some is out because I was actually doing a attention gauge swatch, um, to check because it's so little yellow. I just wanted to be sure that my tension would be right in case there wasn't enough. Um, I found the center from the inside of the ball rather than this one, um, from the outside. I just reached inside here, grabbed some yarn and pulled it out until I found the end. Um, also this seems more of a highlightery yellow than this, but maybe up against the black and the white, it'll look a little, uh, darker. I don't know. So we'll be starting with color A, the yellow, and, um, we're going to start with the head and we are going to be chaining two and doing six single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So to start a uh, chaining, you have to make a slip knot and, uh, this is how I do it. I bring the tail of my yarn. This is the tail, the end, basically when you have your slip knot from the the uh, end of your slip knot to the end of the yarn is your tail and then the part that's still connected to your ball or skein is your working yarn. So I bring the tail around my thumb like this and I put that tail in my left hand, pinch this right here between these two fingers then I just take this loop, swap it over, grab that and tighten down. Um, that's how I do it. Then put the loop on your hook and tighten down enough, but not too much. So like this is sliding pretty easily. If I tighten it too much, it doesn't, um, it doesn't want to slide. It's hard to, hard to work into. I can't even really get, so not too much. You want a little bit of space there. So we're going to chain two. Chaining uh, is you basically press your hook back against your yarn, rotate it so that you're hooking it on that hook, and pull it through the loop on your hook. That's one chain. This is, this is our chain right here, this little V. This is the loop on our hook. We don't count that when counting chains. So we're going to do that again. We're going to catch that yarn and pull it through the loop on our hook, okay? So we have two chains here. Um, I'm going to be doing six single crochet in the second chain from the hook. Let me grab a stitch marker. We will be in the notes, it says, we'll be working continuously in the round without joining, which means we're gonna need a stitch marker. Um, but I'm gonna put one in our first single crochet so it's easy to find. So I'm going to insert into my first chain I made, which is right here. Okay, this is the second chain. This is the loop of my hook. So second chain from the hook. This is first. This is second from the hook. So I'll insert and I'm going to pull up a loop. So I'm going to just catch this yarn like doing a yarn over and pull up a loop. Now I have two loops on my hook and now I'm going to yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook and that is one single crochet, okay? So I'm gonna tighten this down a little um, cause I'm trying to do probably a little bit tighter tension than I usually do. And I'm just sliding my stitch marker under both bars of this first stitch. So that's one. And then I'm gonna insert into the same exact spot again, the same Pull right here, insert, and do the same thing. Pull up a loop, so I have two loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through both loops on my hook, and I'm gonna tighten this down a little. And that's two. So each of your stitches, the top of a single crochet, looks like this little V here. 
So this is a stitch here, this is a stitch here. So that's two and we'll keep going. Insert, pull up a loop. All right, get out of the way. Yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook for three. And I'm just rotating this around as I go. This is four. This is five. And this is six. Now, if you didn't use a stitch marker, you can always count back from your hook. So I'm pulling up the loop on our hook. That's this guy here, so we don't count him. And you can count. This is always gets kind of crooked, by the way. Um, one, two, three, four, five, and then six, okay? Now this hole, this is why I don't love chain two, this hole right here. Um, and we're gonna tighten that up with the tail a little bit later. But for now, um, we are going to start on the next row. So we're not doing any slip stitch to join or anything like that. We're just continuing to the next row and we'll move our stitch marker each time. So I'm going to insert under this first stitch here. Before I, I'm gonna do it before I ever move my stitch marker because um, as a beginner, it, it you can be surprised how quickly you can lose which loop you're looking at. So I'm just gonna slip under here like so. Then take out the stitch marker and then I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops in the hook. Oh, don't mind me. Let me just pull that up big so I can get my hook in here. This is my first single crochet of the next round. That startled me. It cleans itself, the printer does. So this row we're doing two single crochet in each stitch around. So we're just basically doing an increase row. So I just worked this single crochet into this first stitch here. We're gonna go back into the same stitch and we're gonna do another single crochet. So insert, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook. We've now worked two single crochet where there was only one. We're gonna do that for each stitch around. So that's two. And then here's our next stitch right here. This is the edge of the stitch that we already worked on here. You can see that the loops go around it. So under this next stitch here, I'm gonna insert and we're gonna work a single crochet. And then we're gonna insert into the same spot again and work a second single crochet. So that's three and four. And we had six stitches, we're doing two in each, so we need 12. Um, so that's three and four. Here is our next stitch here. So this is five into the same spot, six. Okay. Now here's our next stitch here. And what were we, what is this, seven and eight? Seven, eight. Here's our next stitch right here. Nine, 10. And the next one here, last one rather will be 11, 12. Okay. So that's two single crochet in each stitch around. And uh, if you wanna count your stitches to make sure that you're where you're supposed to be, again, this is your, each little one of these Vs is your, one of your stitches, I usually count by two, so two, four, six, eight, ten, and then twelve here. And um, another thing to know is that this side facing you is your right side, that's what RS means in parentheses. 
This side is your wrong side. This is the inside of uh, the head. So as we work, we'll curve this way and create the head. And this will be our outside. Once we get a little bit wider, we'll weave this tail in and close that up a little bit. So in our next row, we have some brackets. Um, brackets aren't, aren't that bad. So all you're gonna do is you have the set of instruction inside the brackets. You have a single crochet in the next single crochet and then two single crochet in the next single crochet, which is an increase. And then it says six times. So you're gonna do this instruction and then you're gonna repeat it and you're gonna do that a total of six times. In this case, that'll be all the way around all of our stitches. So we're just gonna alternate. So I'm gonna, uh, this time I'll take my stitch marker out first and then insert under this our first stitch here. So I'm gonna do this first single crochet because our first one is just a single crochet in the next single crochet which we've just done and then two single crochet and the next single crochet so an increase so in this next stitch here I'm going to do one two tighten that down and then I'm going to start that over again. So in the next stitch, I'm going to do one. In the next stitch, I'm going to do two. You can count this if you want. You can count it in sets of three, since in this case we're doing threes. So you could count one, two, three. Um, if you really wanted, you could do the math and count up to 18. Whatever you want to do. So we're going to start over again. I just did my increase. So one, this is one, two. Now when you do these, when you have bracket instructions and you're just repeating them around, unless it says otherwise, you should end on whatever the last stitch in the bracket is. So in this case, it ends on an increase. Our last stitch of the round should be an increase. And I won't demonstrate this full, like when we have repeats um, for the brackets, other times I'll just do it the first time and then I'll finish it around off camera. But this is just to show you. So this is our last one and we're doing our increase. Okay, so um, a thing that helped me to figure out when I started was how to tell which stitches were my increases and which were my regular stitches. So if we look closely here, this is an example of just a single crochet. So inside these two loops here is the bar, the top bar of our previous stitch. That's what we worked into. That's what these two loops are around. This is a single crochet. This, you can see, has more loops. It has twice as many. One, two, three, four into here. This is our increase. Now, I'm working kind of tight, so it's a little bit harder to tell. But in general, to me, this leaves a little bit of a bigger opening. I don't know if you can see this at all, but it's sort of like a little window or arch that is visible. If you're wondering why there's tape, I cut my nail a little bit. So I'm just trying to keep it from catching things. So anyway, again, we have into this stitch here multiple four loops and here we have two and as we're working and it gets bigger I think it becomes a little bit more noticeable but this little bit right here you can see this is where this top of this stitch starts going this way in between the stitches 
I'm going to have to take that tape off. And that's the spot between our, our stitches here. So I don't know how well this is coming across, but that's a thing. Uh, anyway, back to what we were doing. Oh, and you probably should mark off your pattern as you go. Um, I don't know where my pen is, but it helps you keep track, especially if you think you're going to maybe have to get up and go do anything while you're doing this. So our next round, four, is a step up from what we did last time. Last time it was single crochet in the first, in one single crochet and then an increase. This time it's single crochet in the next two single crochets and then an increase and we're repeating that all the way around. So I'm gonna start my first single crochet and this will just keep stepping up. So we're gonna insert under here, pull up a loop and finish off that single crochet. Okay, I take it down a little. Put our stitch marker back. That's important when you're working in the round. You really don't want to forget your stitch marker. So this is one. Now we're going to do our next single crochet in the next stitch, which is two, because we're doing single crochet in the next two. And then in the next, right here, we're going to do our increase. One, two. And again, we're going to repeat that all the way around. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, all the way around. And I'll finish that out and I'll be back. Okay, so here we are at the end of round four. So I'm gonna weave in this end on the back now. I'm gonna take the needle that came with the kit, thread this on here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to weave into stitches around here so like, I'm gonna go through this one. I guess I should try to get a good, there's a lot of fuzz on this yarn. So I'll try to clear up the fuzz, but a good example of why. So that's what it looks like. Okay, so go up here. Lose my tail because that's how this goes. I should probably just weave it, like, wrap the tail around a second time, and maybe I will later. Um, just through stitches around here, and then we're just going to tighten it up. Uh, let's see, I'd like to get in here, but it doesn't seem, oh, there we go. Okay, and then somewhere through there, tighten down, and now we're more closed up. So now I will just insert the hook under a stitch. It doesn't really, just a nearby stitch. Go, go in. Stop being, oh, there we go. I'm going to grab this so that I don't pull this all the way through accidentally and then just tie that down, pull it tight, and then sometimes I'll then weave this in a little bit. In this case, since we started with something secured, um, it doesn't really, it's not as significant as if we had started with like a magic circle like a slip knot is already secured in that it won't come like undone but i can weave the ends in around a little bit man smaller tension stitches are harder to work to weave things into anyway um and then i can trim this or just let it sit i'm gonna trim it it's a little less annoying if trimmed and uh, anyway, so there we go. And we will continue on. So our next one, round five, single crochet in the next three, and then increase. So, and this will wanna curve towards you. The wrong side will wanna curve towards you. I just encourage it back the other way as I go. So first single crochet here insert 
pull up a loop. Put that stitch marker back. So this is one. In the next stitch, we're going to do one more for two. And in the next stitch, we're going to do one more for three. And that's our three single crochet. And then we're going to do an increase. Now, one thing I want to point out, if you look at this, when you finish a single crochet in a stitch, you're standing pretty much straight up from the stitch. Um, you can pretty clearly see your next stitch. So I'm going to do this increase. Sometimes when you do an increase, you're no longer standing straight up from that stitch. You're kind of leaning. Um, and it depending on how you're holding things, it can sometimes kind of cover this next stitch here. Now in this case, I'm tightening down a little more than usual. So it's not quite as, but it's a little different from basically this where it's straight up or kind of leaned over. So you want to make sure that you're finding your next stitch and not accidentally skipping it. And you know, let me try this real quick. Cause like I said, with the, there being a smaller amount of yarn, I'm doing a little bit tighter than I normally would. And I feel like this isn't going to make that much sense. So let's try this a little bit looser, just a little, and then I'll take it out and redo it. But okay. So like in this case, we're a little bit bigger. We have a little bit more lean kind of covering this next stitch here so now versus instead of being upright like this so just be aware of that um anyway repeat this around the what is this three and then yeah three and then increase and i will be back after that's done okay this is the end of round five now six, we are just going to step it up one. So now we're single crochet in the next four and then increase. So single crochet in your first stitch here. That's one, two, three, four, and then five and six into this next stitch. So five, six, and we're gonna repeat that around. Okay, so end around seven. And round eight, we're single crocheting in the next six and then increasing. So I'll do my first single crochet. Put my stitch marker back. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, and eight into the same stitch here. Oh. So this, I just split my loop. This is a thing that happens. And uh, there's a lot of ways to fix it, but this here is part of this loop down here. And if I say didn't notice when it happened, it would be, this would be tight to move up. It wouldn't have, I wouldn't be able to lift this. Um, so anyway, in this case, I can just take the rest of my loop here and just tuck it under Sometimes it can happen in a way where the best thing to do is take your hook out and just gently pull until that stitch is out and then lift this loop up and go back in. But um, that's just a thing. So what this is my second part of this. Okay, so we're on, this is what I just said, eight. 
So we're doing six, two, four, six, and then increase, yeah. Okay, so finish this out, and then we'll have another increase round, and then we'll have rounds of single crochet in each stitch round, um, which are, you know, rows. So I'll be back after I finish this one out. Okay, so end of round eight. Now, the interval thing, if your intervals are working out, if you're ending on your increase, your stitch count is probably good. Um, I mean, you could have made two mistakes and ended up, you know. But I'm going to do a stitch count. Um, if you're very new, I recommend doing them um, now and then. So here's our first stitch of the round. I'm going to count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. 12, 14. 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48. 48 is how many we are supposed to have. So, uh, this row we are single crocheting in the next seven and then increasing. So, insert. Do this first single crochet, put the stitch marker in, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, and then increase so two in the next and repeat that around okay so this is end of round nine and I've caught up on the yarn that I was using that I had already used so now this is this is what this does instead of rolling the rolling the ball around as it unravels um okay so anyway, uh, rounds 10 through 17 are all single crochet in each stitch around. Um, I'll demonstrate the first one. It's kind of your basic, literally like bread and butter kind of, of crocheting. But um, I would recommend writing down 10, 11, 12 through 17 to mark off as you go to keep track. Alternatively, if you wanted, you could leave your stitch marker in every row to keep track. You could do that from the beginning if you really wanted to, to keep track. But, um, so, single crochet in each stitch around is basically exactly what it sounds like and simple. So I'm just gonna do this first single crochet. This is kind of a big row to be demonstrating this one, but this is the first one we've had of just single, and it's just one single crochet in every stitch. I'm sure that I don't actually need to demonstrate this, but I said before, especially at the beginning of a kit, I like to err more on the side of demonstrating more than needed. Um, that's another split. Then not demonstrating as much as needed. And also you may have noticed you have these little sort of points. This is where your um, your increases are, where you've done two single crochet and one stitch. Um, this is where we'll start sort of smoothing it out into a smoother looking circle and building kind of down the sides of the head. And now I think you'll probably be able to see visually what I was talking about before, where your increase stitches just look a little different. You can see, or at least I can see, I hope that this is showing them well, the lines of them as they go up. Um, so that's what I mean about them kind of having this little bit of a bigger arch or what have you. Um, but anyways, moving right along. 
And I'm thinking, I mean, it looks like we still have a decent amount of yellow left. Um, so hopefully we'll have enough. It did seem like a very small amount. And at first, looking at the box, it said this thing is supposed to be 8 inches. But then I realized the body wouldn't be, like the head and body wouldn't be 8 inches. They're probably counting the antenna in the height, I would imagine. So that's a little less need for yarn. And I'm thinking about starting to do kind of more than one kit at a time in the sense that what I have been doing until now is starting a kit and only doing videos on that kit until it's done. But then the people who are wanting to start other kits are waiting longer. So I've been toying around with the idea of kind of introducing more than one kit you know, before I finish the full kit of the other. I think that might be a nice thing to do. So we're just each stitch around. You may notice that occasionally there's a stitch that seems harder to work into than that's usually, so like when you do an increase, usually each of those stitches are a little smaller and tighter. And it can take a little bit more force. So working into this increase from the previous round, it's a little tighter than the stitches I was just working. Oh, I'm about to do an increase because I'm talking about increases. Um, tighter than the stitch I was just working into. I have had some patterns where since I knew that I usually when you're stepping it up like this, you're actually doing your increase into the first stitch of your last increase. So I could tell just by knowing I was working into the first increase. Okay. So that is single crochet in each stitch around. I'm gonna curve this this way because this is still our right side, this is our wrong side. I will mark off that row as completed. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for rows 11 through 17. So seven more rows. Um, and then I will be back after all these. Keep moving your stitch marker, don't forget your stitch marker. Mark off your rows as you go and I'll be back. Okay, so end of round 17. But I also realized that I haven't gone over counting rounds yet. So in the center here, this center circle here is our first round. And then each of these circles as we move out is another round. So I will count them by twos. So here's this and this. This is two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, and seventeen. Um, this isn't enough yarn. Uh, when you're looking at the, I didn't think it would be at the beginning of the kit when I saw how small of an amount it was, but at the beginning here, when it's talking about the making your tension, which I did check my tension purposely because I saw it was not a lot of yarn to make sure that that wasn't, wouldn't be the cause if I ran out of yarn. This is the size the, your crochet fabric should measure. That's for your tension swatch but underneath that it says rounds one through seven should measure 2.25 inches across so I take that to mean literally from round seven over here to round seven over here like across 
So I already measured, um, but two, four, six, seven, right like here, and then two, four, six, seven. We're right on what we should be on, like tension wise, if anything, we're a little bit small. So, I, this should be enough to finish the head. We'll see how far we get. I mean, I don't, it's not like I'm a great judge of how much yarn visually it will take to do things, but I don't, I really don't see how this is going to be enough for the whole bait. Moving on. I haven't crossed off 17 yet. Um, now we are going to basically do almost the opposite. Uh, the descending order to our ascending order of steps. Um, we are going to now do single crochet in the next seven and then single crochet two together or decrease and repeat that around. And then we're gonna literally step down, just like we stepped up, we're gonna do the same thing, but with a decrease. So, start my first single crochet. And where an increase makes there be two tops of stitches to work into where there was one, a decrease takes two tops of stitches and turns it into one top of stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we're gonna decrease. So we're going to insert under the first stitch, pull up a loop, and then instead of finishing this single crochet, we're gonna go ahead and insert also under the next stitch, pull up a loop. Now we have three loops on our hook and we're gonna yarn over and pull through all three loops at once. So where there were two stitches, there's now one. Now, just like, you know, in, a, in an increase, you're kind of leaning over your stitches in a decrease, you're leaning away from them. So watch and make sure that you're not working into this right here because it looks kind of like a full stitch um, because our, our crochet is leaning this way. Um, but this loop wrapped around it, that's our second loop of our decrease. So um, instead you're going to be working into this right here for your next one for the repeat. So one, like that. And um, decreases, the way that you can spot them, I'm just putting this in to give me some space. Your crochets have like these two loops going down. Your decreases have a horizontal, or almost horizontal, a diagonal line. They're also thicker. If you feel them, they're they're thicker than regular regular ones. So, and then just repeat that around the same as we were doing before, but with a decrease instead of an increase every time. So I'll do the second one just for funsies. So two, three, four, five. six, seven, and since I paused, I'll double count. So here's my two, four, six, seven. Okay, so again, you're gonna insert under the first, pull up a loop, then immediately insert under the second, pull up another loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops, and that's a decrease. So repeat that around and I'll be back. Okay, this is the end of round 18. Ended on a decrease. 
And now we are going to single crochet in the next six and then decrease. We'll just keep stepping down. So that's our first single crochet. This is round 19. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then decrease. Like so, and repeat that all the way around. Okay, so end of round 19, starting round 20, which is single crochet in the next five and then de decrease. So I'll do my first single crochet here, put my stitch marker back in. So that's one. Two, three, four, five, and then we're going to decrease. And uh, we're going to repeat that all the way around and then be back for round 21. Okay, so end of round 20, beginning of 21, I'm just going to single crochet in the next four and then decrease. So I will do my first single crochet here, place my stitch marker back, one, two, three, Four. And one four, right? Yep. And then decrease. Okay. Repeat that around. Okay. End of round 21. Round 22. Single crochet in the next three and then decrease. So single crochet here in the first, one, two, three, decrease, and repeat that same thing all the way around. Okay, so this is the end of round 22. Our last round of the head, 23, is just single crochet in the next two and decrease. So I'll do my first single crochet here. Put my stitch marker back. Second single crochet and then decrease. And just continue that all the way around. Okay, that's the end of that round. And it says fasten off, leaving a tail for sewing. So I'm going to take out my stitch marker. Come back here. And to fasten off, I'm going to do a slip stitch. So I'm going to insert under the next stitch, pull up a loop. And then instead of yarning over again, I'm just going to pull this loop through the loop on my hook like that, tighten it down. And then to decide how much of a tail I need for sewing, I'm just going to kind of run around the length of this sort of two, two to three-ish times. I'm, I always make too much of a tail, so maybe I'll just do two. But, okay, yeah, I mean, we'll just do two, I guess. So that's like two loops around right there. And I'll just trim this and then pull that out. 
and that's the completed head. Well, you know, not completed, completed, obviously. Um, this is how much yarn is left. This is not going to make all of these pieces. So what I am thinking of doing is checking my yellows and see if I have one that matches. Um, and deciding what to do with that. I don't know. Or maybe not one that matches. Maybe a darker or lighter one. Like I feel like head to body can be different. I wouldn't, if I don't have one that matches, I'm not going to want to start with this and then switch. So I am a little tempted to see how far this gets me. And maybe I'll check that anyway. But regardless, that's going to be it for at least this video. Um, and I'll figure out what to do with the yellow in the meantime. So I hope this is helpful.